Good morning and welcome to another live broadcast from Green TV, the Pat Foundation. So tonight we have another very special guest, Mike McHugh. He's going to tell you all about his journey and I'm going to ask him some questions and find out a little bit more about him and, and why he's decided to come on the show. So first of all, thank you for coming on, Mike. I know it's glorious weather out there. You're in my neck of the woods up here in Yorkshire so um, I can know from personal experience and you can see the sun actually <laughs> glaring through the windows here that it's a, a lovely evening so I appreciate you coming on the show today so what have you been up to today and welcome to the show yeah thank you, welcome thank you for the invite just been busy working really just um, making sure that I, all my paperwork's up to date before I go for a week's annual leave tomorrow so uh, looking forward that's the big driver but oh. uh, I've got a day at work tomorrow, then I, I can relax and have a week off. Oh, nice. You're doing anything good? I don't suppose you'll be flying anywhere, will you? I suppose with the current No, we, well. um, got, uh, we, we only moved into a new house two weeks ago, so we've got a little bit of work to do on that. Oh. And then um, we'll probably go away for a couple of days next week. Got to get in a, pick in a new caravan up on Tuesday. So, yeah, oh, wow. go away for a couple of days with the dogs. Oh, that's that. Well, that sounds perfect in this current climate. Yes, because last week, viewers, if you tuned, if anyone's watching from last week, we um, started to do our live broadcast with Mike, and we had some issues because um, he didn't have the internet, so he was to try and do it outside, but it didn't play ball, did it? So <laughs> here we are this week, fully connected up and, and ready and raring to go, and, and in your new home. So that's absolutely fabulous. So Mike, I've invited you on the, the show tonight now. Um, tell our viewers what you do for a living um, and, and a little bit about yourself if that's okay yeah so um, I'm Mike I've um, been in the police for 21 years um, I left the military in 2000 after serving 12 and a half years um, and as I said last week it was a natural route for me mm. um, for simple reasons that in the military <laughs> very disciplined go go <laughs> Somebody wanting to come on the limelight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry about that. So, um, okay. yeah, so I left the military and, and joined the police, and it was just a natural progressive route for me. Um, even though the police isn't as disciplined as the military, and, and some um, ex military do find that difficult when they join the police, but for me, um, it was the easy option because of what I'd done in the military. Um, I've been on operational duties, and basically in the military, you get told what to do and you've got to do it. You've got to obey, obey the orders. Um, and it, the police is very similar. The rank structure is very similar. Um, so, you know, 21 years has flown by. Um, I still remember my days in the military like it was yesterday. But um, I'm on my uh, downward slope now. I've only got a year left before I retire. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but that's it, really. Um, for me, I just think it's, it's probably the best move I made. I did apply for lots of jobs when I left the military. But again, it's that, as I said last week, it's just getting recognised for your skills, yeah. your transferable skills, and, and putting them into practice. It's really difficult. So tell me, what um, forces did you serve in, Mike? Because there's a little bit uh, of a divide as I'm learning sort of with the um, being out and about with the Green Task Force guys. There is a little bit of a divide. So which forces was you? So in 1989, I joined the Royal Corps of Transport. Um, I got advised to, to get a trade by my uh, recruiting sergeant all those years ago. Um, so I joined the Royal Club Transport and uh, got my trade. And then um, it went to the really large corps, the RLC in 1993. Wow. And then, um, so I specialized, I was a combat logistician, but I'd done loads of jobs, physical training instructor. I was a, um, I worked in the OD, bomb disposal, I've done numerous tours, operational tours of duty, um, first Gulf War, uh, Northern Ireland, Bosnia, Kosovo, all them places. Uh, and that was, you know, that was the big driver for me. Um, I followed really in my father's footsteps. He was a Grenadier Guard. So um, it was always going to be that route, I think. Um, and and that, that was the thing about it. it was, the choice was endless. You know, you, you, the choice you get when you join the army is absolutely phenomenal. People think that you just join up and go, you know, as a soldier, but you don't. There's loads of career paths in there. And I think it's even better nowadays because... They're trying to hone it in. There's not as many luxury, gorgeous posters as there was many years ago. We've moved out of Germany, not so much in Cyprus, it's places like that. So um, it is like, you know, at the front line, really. And, and that was the big driver for me when I was 18. 
No. Mm. So I guess you've seen a, a bit of the world then and seen a, a few things in your time. What's um, what's a memory? What sticks in your mind from, you know, whether it doesn't have, obviously good, bad or however, what's, what sticks in your mind mostly from your time served? I, I think the camaraderie. I think that uh, it doesn't matter where you go. I mean, I, I bump into people all over. I mean, um, just having that that knowledge that somebody's out there that you've served with or and you see it you know and when you when i when, when i have uh, formal you know uh, occasions i put my medals all on and the people just come and ask you so many questions about where you've been what you've done um, and stuff like that and to me that's just just that's that family feeling I've, i mean i've been out about been out the army 21 years but we still get that family feeling and where i work we've got a few ex-military um all in the same call that i was and it's bizarre um but you still get that sense of being wanted or being being part of that real big army family and the police is similar to that to be fair yeah but not as not as social because you right. know in the police, you're all over the place i can relate to that i mean i've seen that we've mentioned it in previous shows and you know in various videos and posts and things i've been putting out there it's you know the guys do when you do even though you can be out five ten fifteen twenty you know you get a group of veterans together and it's um yeah. it's like you you're all back together and the, the banter's there and you know it's it is it's like a family so i can you know being an outsider you know looking at i can relate to that and i've witnessed it so um, that's good. So let's talk about present day now. So your time, obviously, serving with the police. So you say it was a natural progression to to leave. Why, in you know, for people out there, so say this this you know, guys coming out of the services thinking actually, what's my career path? What do I do now? You know, why was it such an easy transition for you? I just think that when you come out in literary you've been so regimented, you've been so disciplined. And I don't think it's a very easy um, sort of transition into civilian life. Uh, yeah. And I just think that the police offer that. Yes, it's not as disciplined, it's not as regimented, but you've still got that way of work on a day to day basis. You've still got to turn up on work on time. You've still yeah. got to be smart, you've still got to be presentable. And I think the military just literally roll into that role really just fall in right into it um and and i found that i mean on my course of 58 there was there was 11 military so ex-military so you know that's doing quick mass 20 percent you know just under 20 percent we're really struggling nowadays to get the ex-military in because of the the academic side of it is it's really hindering our recruitment process um and i, I think for me it's it is a good step forward, but we're missing out on absolutely essential candidates who will make it, fantastic police officers. Yeah, it's funny you should say that. I mean, we've had a couple of conversations, obviously, off air, and, you know, we've talked about this and how, you know, the likes of myself, um, in terms of career-wise, to, to, you know, attract veterans into there and obviously with you know the work with military networks that um, we do here whether it's green tv and um, pat foundation or you know um, myself at ga recruitment it's a case of kind of attracting and, and sort of making it sound good again i know is it um preta patel i know in government she's she's kind of recognizing this and seeing that the academic side is kind of putting you know veterans off in a way so i think she's actually i've been sent an article um about that that she's actually looking into maybe taking that side you know the academic sort of side away and, and getting the, these guys in because you know it does for anybody who wants to be a career in the police obviously go for it but it is a really good fit you know with the ex-forces guys like yourself so is there anything else you know you could do you're seeing it every day you're seeing the benefits for the guys you're seeing that it's a great career path for example you know is there anything that people watching this tonight can do is there anything that we can help in the process i think first and foremost is if they are interested then get in touch with your local force and see what they're offering now i know that our force have just agreed that uh, if you've served in the military for four years and more you don't need a certain level of entry so That's we are good. making 
making uh, headway in that. But make contact with them. Um, tell them what you've got, what you've been, what you've been doing, your skills, your disciplines, um, and I, I guarantee you that you'll get a reply back because you know we're screaming out for for new new student officers. In fact, new officers full stop. And the beauty of it is, is that if they do get in, you know, they can specialise after a number of years. So they're not wasted. For example, you know, we traditionally in the police, and that's not just our force, but nationally, the firearms departments are made up of ex-military because, again, it's all about that transferable skills. Um, and we're working really hard. I know that the Royal Military Police have just agreed with the College of Police in that some of their skills are recognised and they get given a, an investigation award when they leave the military. Wow. They transfer that across. So we are making headway, but it's really slow. Um, but I just think that they, they need to make contact with their relevant recruitment and, and just say to them, this is who I am, this is what I've got. Can mm. I or will I be accepted? Um, and, and not to just sit back and think, right, okay, I won't be or won't have the necessary skills. It, mm. You know, you've got to take a bit of personal responsibility. And I think, you know, being ex-military, you understand that totally. You've yeah, got to definitely. take that responsibility and, and move forward with it. Um, and don't I think mean, it... because you haven't got those skills and A-levels or what it may be, GCSEs, that you're not going to get recognised for what, what you are and who you are. Yeah. So, you know, it's really important to just take that first step. It might be a case that the, you know, yourself uh, or, you know, sort of the police forces maybe need to sort of get into that veteran, um, whether it's, you know, obviously working with resettlement programmes and this career. I mean, obviously, COVID hasn't helped. Um, we've been through this for the last sort of year and a half now. So I guess when things start moving back to normal and you can do careers fairs, you can do open days and, you know, you can probably get out and, and about a bit more. It might be you can do maybe a bit more work um, with them and, and sort of and get out there. I mean, now has the dropout rate dropped dramatically do you think is it you know you're not getting the the ex-forces guys along to your training days and putting think, the interest in yeah i think covid hasn't has played a major part in recruitment that's full stop that's not just military but yeah. I, I, the problem i see is that we're doing a lot of work locally with obviously we've got leckenfield dst nearby yeah okay we do a lot of work there but it's the work that we 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 need to do with like the CTP, the Career Transition Partnership, yeah. and, and we have got contacts there. We do have a stand there each year, and um, but I just think that it's not being sold enough, uh, yeah. both via our force and um, via anybody else. You know, we, we're looking at looking at the older candidates now as well. We just put an ad yeah. out around forty plus you can still join. They don't yeah. be ashamed to apply because you've got all that life experience. And that's yeah. a massive, massive bonus for us because if you've got life experience, you know, you've lived a little bit, you've, you've been around, you, yeah. you know what it's like out there. Um, and that's, that's the thing with the military, you know, they've been to these places where they've got to adapt, they're flexible. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, all these mm -hmm. skills that we should be talking about, they've got them in abundance, haven't they? Oh, totally. And then the discipline side and, you know, the structure and everything else. And and I, and I guess with, you know, ex-military, you, you've kind of got this um, sort of protective side, you know, sort of ingrained in you anyway, whether it's going to the police service or the fire service. I know that's an easy transition for them as well. So, so yeah, it's kind of maybe, you know, needs to be a bit of work done behind the scenes. Maybe it needs to be made a little bit easier for the guys to join the forces. Let's, you know, let's face it, it's an area that we do need more police. We do need more um, resources in, in that sense mm. um, to help you know, with the world and, and economy and everything. So, so yeah, so let, let us know, Mike, what, um, you know, we're here. We'll be happy to help in some way and, and we'll do, you know, having access to a, a big veterans community and network. So it's just a case of getting the word out there, you know, with anything. So, yeah, so up. thanks for that. So, so now we've sort of talked about sort of the police side and, um, you know, I, don't think you gave me that many stories of um, back in the day. I know you guys are. I've had um, other, obviously, previous veterans on the show, and they, they kind of 
guarded and things. So yes, you've told me the camaraderie and it's like a family, but can you remember one sort of, um, let's think, let me think, some um, sticky situation that you was in, maybe that, you know, you had to, that you can talk about, <laughs> that you could actually, you know, have to resolve and um, you can remember, it's one of those stories that you probably tell your kids or your grandkids, for example. Uh, yeah, That's I think, I mean, you've probably got a list as long as your arm, really, but there's a, there's a place and a time for the, them sort of stories. But I think, <laughs> for me, um, on, on most most operational tours, you're so close to people that mm. you've got to make sure they've got your back. And, I, and I've, been in a, I've been in some sticky situations, both in Northern Ireland and Bosnia, where, you know, you think to yourself, oh, it's going to go all pear-shaped here. And, you know, where... If you don't do something or something doesn't do, wow. you, do it for you then you know you're going to lose something valuable um and that's the thing about it you know you, you can always rely on somebody to to back you up um mm, I mean, trust one, yeah trust is there and that's the thing about it you, you can trust them with your life and i know that i, I mean I've, I've been in i've been in i've done 10 operational tours in my time in the military and that's that's not bragging or boasting because there's probably people out there who've done hundreds and hundreds of times more than that but i just think that some of the situations where i've been in bosnia where it's been minus 56 and you know you're Gosh. you're in a windswept valley and you know you think to yourself right okay it's bloody freezing uh yeah. people don't get out of beds and you just you just got to motivate them and you know yeah. it's, it's all about little things like that and you know when things are going horribly wrong on exercise and you just you know it's peeing down with rain um and you know that you're going to be moving location you've got to dig in and it's it's little things where you know people come into your hand and mm. just having that sense of belonging and saying right okay let's get this sorted many hands make light work and, and sometimes yes. that's it I, I mean i i think the, one of the biggest i wouldn't say issues or a result but i had a, an issue in northern ireland where i was on duty and um, i was duty sort of corporal and it was like one of my uh one of my advanced corporals and a private went across into the green area now that not to confuse you but got red and green in northern ireland red you don't go out anywhere green you can go yeah. out there and um they didn't come back in the morning that was a quite a hairy situation because whatever reason they've gone out and i was expecting them back at whatever time in the morning um but yeah it was very 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 weird but it turned out yeah. taken well you know and it was just like even though it was quite a heart stopping moment mm. it all turned out great because of people doing the work for you and and helping you and you know making you feel at ease and it's just little mm. things like that you know um and i went through the promotion chain quite quickly i got promoted to a within seven years which uh, nowadays is unheard of but and, and having that trust and that responsibility at 25 it is oh. quite scary you know, even nowadays we get we get people who are promoted quite young, and uh, that's that's the issue. You know, there's always somewhere there to turn to, always someone who's done something that you want to do or what meaning to do. Or there's you know, there's never ever somebody who will say no. It's always you know somebody can fall back on and right, I've done this wrong. How do I do this? And even even as a young soldier in Germany, you know, where the initiation initiation ceremonies, you know, and are just wild you know getting covered in battery grease and then bezel that hung out onto a uh <laughs> a, a hook of a, a back of a truck you know over dinner you know, parading and but it's it's all about that going into the bar and your first first initiation ceremony doing the top shelf and little things like that that stick in your memory you know but so what's you know, the top I, shelf I, i've not heard that one what's the top shelf i've not heard shelf, of that the, one the top shelf in a pint glass Okay, oh. so you've got whiskey, vodka, Bacardi, you name it. Whatever's on the top shelf goes in, you drink it. Oh, you wow. Know, and and that, that can lead to, obviously, lots of other things, the games you play. I mean, even, even you know, you work hard and you play hard, and that's that's the, the real reason, isn't it? You know, the British Army have got such a good reputation. Yes, we do a job, but when the job's finished, you, you, still, you play hard as well, you know, yeah. and that's, what it's and that's about. important. Yeah, and, and I think even... Just, you know, having a, a beer in the bar after you've had a really long day. You know, everybody converges on the bar and, you know, you talk about your day and then you do what you need to do. Um, 
but yeah i've had some wild nights in the naffy you know <laughs> wild wild nights but um I'm, i've survived i'm here <laughs> <laughs> that um, seems to be a common denominator when i speak to ex forces guys it's kind of like they sort of do like you've just done this do this side where then they go oh, I've, I've done some things oh, I've, yeah. lived, I've done this but I'm, i've survived <laughs> yeah and I, I mean when we when we talk about that you know you you have these these nights that you, you remember like yesterday you know yeah, when you're doing memories. promotion courses and it's hard work for three, four weeks, but at the end of it, it's so beneficial because, yeah, you have a mega, mega piss up, you know. It's great. But, oh, bleep, you know, bleep. <laughs> yeah, you, rel you relive all your your hard times that you had through the course, but you've managed it, and because it's that teamwork again, and then I know we keep coming back to it, but it just, it is just massive. Yeah really is uh, yeah i can't uh, i can't agree with you more so you think that's why well so being there we go just some being part of the police force it'll be a, a doddle i'm sure i'm going to get some flack for, for saying that because i know it's not an easy job at all but i think in, in theory it's it's um, yeah. it is it's the only thing that really nearly didn't why they really didn't join the police was the um the training and learning side of it because it is quite heavy Right. You know, it's it's classroom based. Um, it is a lot to take in, uh, and I'm not saying that lightly. I mean, I train it, uh, and when I've delivered, I've had a, a heavy day. I'm absolutely tired out mentally yeah, and physically I can imagine. because the the stuff we're teaching you, you need to know, and and that's the thing about. It. I think that puts a lot of ex military off because they've not learnt in that environment for a while, yeah. and I think that there's no easy way to do it. To be fair. Um, especially now that the academic side's coming on, they've got a little bit of academia that you need to do to get that that uh, degree level after three years. And I think it, it does really put them off because it's not it's easy. It's not something that they're used to, is it? It's not yeah. something that they're used to or oh, it's, it's ingrained. So you, you're right. So if they do loosen that up a little bit and take experience and training rather than, you know, some paperwork and exams, it's... Um, yeah, it's one of those. Hopefully things will change for the future and, you know, people listen. Members of Parliament are already starting to take stock. So, you know, it, it could be a very different story. Yeah, I think when we talk about the uplift, I mean, we're talking about uplifting 20,000 officers in, in the next few years. It's a right. false economy because, you know, it's we are losing, in our force, we lose a fair number each year. So we're replacing them. But nationally... It, it is an uplift, but they need to do something in regards recognising ex-military, recognising these people who are in management within the military, because these are these are going to be really powerful people. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we do direct entry now, and for all ranks, all all sort of roles. And I, and I think that these people in the higher positions of the military would be perfect. But again, what's stopping them? And that's that's where it all falls down for me. What's stopping them applying? Why aren't they getting recognised? Saying that though, we have just applied, um, just employed a ex-military guy in the leadership management position, which is great. You know, and he's bringing loads of great ideas to to the front, uh, to the forefront. You know what I mean? And I think for me, that's how how it should work. But it proves mm. there's proof of the pudding there that mm. you know there was seven or eight applicants, and the ex-military guy got it. So mm. what, what's he brought yeah. to the table? Well, he's got all his experience, all his uh, his diligence, his intelligence, all that stuff that's come there, and he's he's, he's interviewed. He's come top of the interview panel. So yeah. you know, it says a lot, happened. doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's in my department. I mean, I've got one, one, two, three, three of us are ex-military, and you know, and this is not blowing our own trumpets, but we tend to work a lot harder and a lot quicker yeah. than other people right you know right. and that's just your mentality yeah it's the can do attitude and the get the job done attitude I, I've, I've witnessed that myself so 
so yeah so we're sort of coming to an end of this this broad, uh, broadcast tonight and um thank you so much for, for coming on to the show mike just but just before i go i'd just like to find out a little bit more about you as well so um you say you've got a week off and you um i think we spoke off air that you're going to go caravan there's not a lot really we can do we can't fly we can't um and with the restrictions so that that'll be be, be good fun but what else do you like to do in your spare time um well i um i i'm a rugby coach a rugby coach wow rugby coach for a, a local um rugby union side in hull so i right. do that is that people. adults or is it children or? that's adults yeah um it's inclusive it's an inclusive rugby side so that's uh, everybody's welcome inclusive gay rugby side which is great um, oh, so give your club a little bit of a plug so whereabouts is that in hull, yeah it's say? all round heads um they work at in, well, they, we, we uh, train at the university of hull and oh, um, we're trying to find homeless at the moment we're um, oh. we're trying to find a club that will accept us oh. so it's really difficult um we have got some contact we've got some fingers in the pies as they say but it's not uh, it's not come to the, the table yet so nice. you know we're struggling to find our, our home base <laughs> But we'll get oh, so if anyone's listening tonight, give them a home. Is there just, just the many home. <laughs> Yeah, need a rugby home. Do, it, does many turn up? Is it is it popular? Yeah, we, we have, you know, on average between eighteen and thirty turn up each week. Oh brilliant. Yeah, so it's it's a good turnout and they're really sociable. Um uh, oh. I don't know if they love me or loathe me uh, <laughs> at the end of the night, but it's all beneficial for them um it's beneficial for me because it, it gives me a great sense of pride knowing that they yes they might be sweating and probably doing other things that you know um but for me it's like they're that that level now um yeah. what's the what's the age range that you've got Mike? yeah we've got between 18 and 45. Right, okay so pretty varied we've got a vast we've got a female uh coach as well brilliant so yeah um so i'm um i've just been given the head coach role starting from september perfect so, but apart from that i play five aside i play um keep myself fit as i can um take, take dogs for a walk um, oh, what dogs have yeah. you got i'm a dog lover myself so what have I've you got, got? Two, two shiatsus oh uh, and piper one's a pop she's nine months old and then probably seven so yeah oh. you know it's as it gets it gets more difficult as you get older you know i'm i'm 50 now and i still i do feel it a little bit uh, i'm not as fit as i used to be but you know mm. it's just it's just being i think it's that military again that going out there and just doing it yeah. you know yeah. in all weathers i mean i i don't like to let my guys down you know if i'm coaching i'm mm. coaching and i don't care if yeah. it's and windy snowy whatever and it doesn't matter how many people turn up i'll still coach them you know, exactly right. skin's waterproof as they say don't they? that's the, the guys have taught me that no yeah, such thing as bad weather it's uh, bad you know, clothing <laughs> you, you, only, you only get wet once you know? <laughs> so, uh, it doesn't matter you know what i mean um you, as you say your skin's waterproof and i think again it's that sense of being um the person in charge and doing a good job you know and they do I thank agree. me for it you know yes absolutely beast them about uh, but it's all beneficial but they love me, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you do quite a lot outdoors then. So obviously that helps with, you know, the, the mental health side and keeps you positive and, and keeps you focused, I guess. It, it is a key and, and I bang on about it all the time, but being outdoors, yeah. you know, is massively beneficial that's for us. The, that's the other thing, Gail, is that mental health, you mentioned a, a great, it's, you know, it's two words there, mental health. We are absolutely pushing the boat out for mental health wellbeing. Yeah um and that's that's massive in in any organization the police you, you deal with things that you don't want to deal with yeah. um you know people look at stuff on a daily basis that they don't want to look at uh, and we have to have a responsibility there and, and i'll yeah, put my hand up you know good. i went i went on a course a few few months back and it really tugged on my heartstrings you know around mm -hmm. mental health and how it affects ptsd and stuff to the point that i came off the course because i wasn't happy with where I was at the time uh, and that's no. not because I'm not strong enough it's just that yeah. I didn't want to put myself in that position in case I had to deal with something that might flick the switch 
you know yeah. and that's the problem it's it's recognizing that at the time mm. Oh, well, good for you for sharing that. And, you know, and thank, thanks for sharing that. You know, like like you say there, it's not a sign of weakness or any, anything else. It's admitting, you know, that that's what's best for me and that that's what's right for me. So, yeah, definitely. So um, I'm going to round this show up tonight. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been great. And it's really, you know, good to find out um, about all different walks of life and um, everybody's got a story to tell and it fascinates the hell out of me listening to people's stories and um, and what you know they are you know ex-forces your policemen sort of by day but then you're your coaching rugby so everybody's got um, these little journeys and things to find out about so thanks everybody for watching again tune in next week when we shall be having more guests on the show we will be recording this and posting it out separately so mike you can push it out to your networks um and, and obviously i will too along with the pat foundation so yes thanks ever so much for coming on the show mike it's been an absolute pleasure and have a great rest of your evening bye for now bye thank you very much anytime thank you